Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. After much delay, we are finally going to check out the Gibson Adam Jones Les Paul Standard, this time from Gibson USA. Now, as we unbox this guitar today, I wanted to clarify because there seems to be an influx of new viewers. Gibson has two main divisions. It's Gibson USA and Gibson Custom Shop. So when I say Gibson USA, I'm talking about their production level guitars. All Gibsons at the time of this video are USA made, but this is the fourth signature for Adam Jones, the guitarist of Tool, the guy who is synonymous with the silver burst finish. The Custom Shop originally released an age signed version as well as a VOS. While only 10,000 and 6,000 dollars respectively. The used market went insane and now they are a part of Gibson history. However, last year, about a year after that release, they did an age sign number two, except for it wasn't as heavily aged. It was just like a Murphy Labs age. You can check out that video right here. But the one we're checking out today comes from Gibson USA, a more affordable version offered at $2,999. So let's go ahead and crack into this one and see, hey, is it worth the price or not? Now, if you're lucky to get one for retail price, so far I I'm thinking yes, these are worth it because they're not that much more than a regular Les Paul standard. Now we're not getting any type of a silver burst case with these guys, it's just your regular current day Gibson USA style that's in the nice dark finish, but honestly this feels a lot better than it looks, let's just put it that way. Let's go ahead and crack this puppy open and see what it looks like. There we go, it is a US silver burst. So what's really cool about this release, even if you don't care about Adam Jones, it's the first time there's been a teardrop shape Silver Burst Les Paul standard offered by Gibson USA since 1988 in the Showcase Edition series. Like we've had the Les Paul standards that have the whole perimeter burst, but it's just not the same. They usually reserve that for the whole Gibson custom shop. So even if you just want to swap out your truss rod cover there and go for something else different that's not Adam vibed, you can now do that and that's awesome. But getting it out of the case. It feels pretty good, just like a 50s or 60s Les Paul standard. I was curious about the neck because they called it a rounded 70s, which is kind of like an oxymoron because the 70s are known for being slim tapered generally. So I thought that was an interesting spec, but I would say, yeah, it feels very similar to a 60s Les Paul standard neck, but it is very rounded. OK, I think I see what they're going for there. It is a very flat U shaped neck, so it might be slightly different there. But something else that makes these different from like regular standards is the fact that we have the volute. Now the biggest kind of what, why, why did they do this spec is the fact that it has a mahogany neck versus the other signatures having a maple. But at the same time, it kind of makes it cool because now you can have one of each in your collection and they're going to sound just a little bit different besides just having slightly different pickups in here. But as far as case candy, it looks like we've got all the usual stuff. Gibson strap, new small warranty pamphlet, Extra tiny baby photo, silica packet, case keys, owner's manual with a nice polishing cloth, and a multi-tool. But from first impressions here, yeah, I would say it definitely matches my expectations of what this model was going to be. Basically just a Les Paul standard with Adam Jones specs. <laughs> I don't know what else you want me to say. So let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. But while we're taking this thing apart and getting the fretboard conditioned, let's have a word from our sponsor of tonight's episode, Sweetwater. Sweetwater is the premier place to buy your gear. Whether you're looking for a new patch lead or a brand new Les Paul Custom, they can help you. My favorite thing about them is you can actually see the guitar that you're selecting, so you can choose between its weight if you want a special serial number, or if you want a particularly nice flame top, or maybe you want a plain one. It's all possible when you shop Sweetwater online. But if talking on the phone is more your style, hey, they got you covered there too. Once you order from them once, they're going to call you and check on you to make sure you're doing okay every couple of months. And if all that's not enough, they also do monthly giveaways. So you can check that link in the description to check Sweetwater out and enter those. And thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring tonight's episode. All right, finally on the workbench. So first off, in case you didn't notice, they actually did age the finish just a little bit because Mr. Jones is well known for having the slightly aged silver burst. So if you were to buy a brand new Les Paul Custom in silver burst, it would actually be a little bit more silvery than this. It has a little bit of the greening effect to it. But the neck pickup in the USA version is a Burst Bucker 1, whereas it's Custom Bucker in the Custom Shop versions. And then they really change things up here. This is a mass-produced production run, right? So they're not going to use Seymour Duncan pickups because they would rather just make them themselves so it'd be cheaper. As far as I'm aware, I think this is a brand new pickup for Gibson called the Lead High Gain. 
Just has the regular Gibson USA base plate though. I'll be interested to see what that reads as. Because if that sticker ever falls off, that would be really hard to <laughs> know what it is. But it reads 16.64, so it's kind of like dirty fingers readings. Except for we do not have the double row of adjustable pull pieces. Then switching over to our neck, it's about 7.64, which is very similar to a T-top that his originally would have had. And then in the middle, 5.23. As far as the routes, everything's looking okay here. It is a short neck tenon, just like all the other ones from Gibson USA. And you can see that, yes, it does indeed have a maple top. And you can see the mahogany body right there. The bridge pickup route looks about the same. But I do want to note, this is ridiculous lead length on both of these pickups. Which I guess is a good thing if you want to take them out and put them in something else. But I think they had to leave them long so they could reverse this pickup. Yeah, that's an Adam Jones thing. He does that for his neck. But if you don't care for the Adam Jones affiliation, you can just flip it around. You're going to have to flip your pickup ring around, though, too. I was surprised to see they still did the metal switch tip. This one has the knurled sides as well. This has the Nashville-style bridge that you can adjust using Allen keys. And it is extra lightweight, which isn't really Norlin era spec, but hey, it is what it is for this one. API. Same thing for the tailpiece. Extra lightweight, advanced plating incorporated branded. So these knobs, they're, they're not the highest quality I've ever seen Gibson use. And I'm talking specifically this one. You see that right there? There's like a gap in this knob, so you can actually see through it. And if you actually look around the edges of all these, you can kind of see a line where the black doesn't completely line up. Some of these are worse than others, but that's the first time I've ever really noticed that on Gibson black speed knobs. But easy enough to fix. Pop that off, take some black nail polish, and I think you could get rid of it. So for all first impressions here, I would say they did a good job capturing Adam Jones vibes on a budget. I'm really surprised they didn't mark these up to like 3,500. I bet they still could have got it. And here's what makes this standard really cool to me. The fact that they gave it a stock ebony fretboard and you get the mother of pearls trapezoid inlays. So normal Gibson USA standards, they have acrylic because that's technically a historic spec for a standard. Even the original 50s ones didn't get true mother of pearl. That's a Les Paul custom thing. So we kind of have a blending of elements there and I find that incredibly fascinating. As far as QC goes, yeah, you, you've got your typical tooling marks. I see some like right there. So not perfect in that aspect, but not the worst we've ever seen. But we've got 22 medium jumbo style frets with a 24 3 quarter inch scale length, 12 inch fretboard radius. I measure a fret height of 0 0.05 with quite a wide 1.72 inch nut width that increases to 2.12 by the 12th. First fret neck depth of 0.82 then increases to 0.97 by the 12th. Here's what that neck looks like at the 1st fret and the 12th fret, just a C-shape rounded. And now moving on to the headstock here. Gibson Mother of Pearl logo, Les Paul model silk screen, truss rods looking like this. Our cover has the whole Adam Jones 1979 thing going on. The back looks like that. But you'll notice the tips on these tuners are actually shaller. That's kind of a throwback to the 70s, which is what all this stuff is about. Moving on to the back side. I gotta notice it's completely black back here. We didn't get the silver burst job here on the neck, headstock, around the edges. So that's kind of a trade off for not having to pay custom shop prices here. And hey, it's a standard. But if they would have done that, I would have lost my mind over these things. That would have made them so much cooler because the standard has never been done like that in silver burst, to my knowledge. Now the old Norlin era standards, yeah, they got the burst on the back. We'll start with our electronics. Here it is compared to the custom job version. But you can see we still have the Gibson branded pots. You've got the orange drop capacitors. Fairly similar, but not exactly the same. But not perfectly 70s spec because they have the regular ground wire here instead of like a, a shielding tin, even though they've got the bottom side of it. The strap buttons are slightly unique. They have a completely flat top to them. I think we've seen those before on a different model though. Might just be Gibson USA's new strap buttons. Haven't seen them in a while. As far as the back goes, everything's pretty clean here. I'm not sure when they would show up for you, but occasionally you can see a small dip in the mahogany wood. Like right here, there's a very small contamination that kind of looks like a dean. And then this looks like there's something under the finish or it didn't get fully sanded down smooth. So a couple of small things like that, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things, nothing that really catches your eye. Other things I'm noticing is we have like a little bit of a lacquer check line right here by the binding. 
You've got that up here at the top as well. What that is, that's the lacquer line showing you where the binding actually ends and what got covered up. So not a brake crack or repair, just kind of a small cosmetic thing. Looks like we've got another one right here. That's showing you where the maple cap is put on top of the body. Now, normally you don't see stuff like this show up for a couple of years. So it is a bit sad to see it brand new, but that's the thing with these. You're waiting at least four months from brand new orders. You kind of have to take what you get on these <laughs> unless you want to wait a really long time for a perfect one but yes indeed mahogany neck according to the spec sheets we can't really see it anywhere but it's cool that they at least gave it the volute and if you're all upset that hey this one has mahogany not maple like all the other ones remember adam jones doesn't just use a 1979 custom on stage i remember when i first got into guitars everybody said his was an 83 and he preferred the mahogany neck versions so maybe that was just a rumor that got dispelled or he changed his tune because it's into 82 83 when gibson transitions back into the mahogany necks so i'm actually all right with that spec it makes it different makes it unique maybe you want to have both in your collection they also gave us a new little tool design back here but despite the Schaller tips they are still grover tuners and you can see our serial number on this one dating it to 2022 68th day of the year initial batch 189th in production All said and done this one weighs nine pounds 5.5 ounces let's go ahead plug it in and hear how this one sounds Naturally, with an Adam Jones Les Paul. Makes sense to start with distortion. Gibson did it. <laughs> it sounds like tool to me. So if that's what you're going for, that's what this can do. to the clean tones.
I play this, I, I really don't even care about the neck pickup. I mean, the middle position's okay. Because it's blending some of the hotness of the bridge. But I mean, this pickup, it's a great new pickup. It just completely steals the show. And that's the clean channel, and it's almost into overdriven territory. If I pick a little softer. All said and done, what are my final thoughts on the new Adam Jones Les Paul Standard from Gibson USA? Very happy with this. I mean, trust me guys, I've had every single Adam Jones iteration so far. This is just every bit as good as the signature version. Now, does it have everything that those have? No, unfortunately not. However, side by side, the color's pretty good, maybe a little bit darker on this one, but they vary example to example. The looks as far as the pickups are there, they've got the same style of knobs and finish. Sure, one has block inlays and the other is a trapezoid, but at the same time, you gotta remember, this is supposed to be a Les Paul standard, not a custom, and no headstock mirrors for us this time, but remember, this is like a, a $20,000 plus guitar now, whereas these are somewhere around 3,000, plus or minus a little bit, depending on if you're patient or not. I think this is worth every bit of $3,000. They pretty much just took the premium nature of this finish and Adam's signature name over top of it, instead of like the AAA flame maple top. Pretty much the only place where this really lacks in cosmetics is they didn't do the burst job on the back. And I'm kind of surprised they didn't put the posi locks on this. I mean, they took all that time to reissue these darn things. You'd think they would use them, but there you go. If you're a player looking to capture Adam Jones's tone and all that, yeah, I would highly suggest this. If you just like silver burst, um, you might want to change the pickups because like I tried to play this thing and do other things than tool, but it, it was just all tool for me. <laughs> it's just, it's got that tone. It's very dialed in. It's an aggressive pickup. But knowing that they did these USAs very well, there is supposed to be an Epiphone version coming up. I really, really hope they put these USA pickups in there. I'm doubtful of it, but we'll just have to see. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.